Shuffle, shuffle. Can you say potatoes? Potatoes. Okay, Shukrina, yours is going to have to be a bit louder. I am very close to my mic. Then start yelling. It's sad It's sad that Zara couldn't join us. So we do without her, is it? Yeah. Yo, human. <laughs> okay, you can't have international podcast without me, okay? <laughs> Shut up and not start. <laughs> Hola, beautiful potatoes and people and anything else you identify with. Welcome back to another episode of the Triple SC Show. <laughs> Have you ever wondered how Eid or Raya is celebrated across the globe? Has it ever dawned on you that one celebration could have different variations due to cultural and geographical influences? Well, in case you haven't noticed... Say it with me, everybody. Eid. Okay, never mind. I was left hanging. Today, for the first time in podcaster history, we have not two, not three, not four, but five guests on the show to share what a typical Eid celebration is like in their hometowns. So feel free to let us know which ones you resonate with the most. And remember, you are not alone. Without further ado, cue roll call. In no specific order, we present the adorable Shukrina. Yay! Okay, sorry. <laughs> Hello everyone. Hi, I'm Shuk. I'm from Kuching, Sarawak, Malaysia. And I laugh at random things. Okay, and, <laughs> and I am a Malay, so obviously I celebrate Hari Raya or Eid. Yeah. Next, we have the magnificent Shafafa. Hi everyone, <laughs> hope everyone's doing well. Myself, Shafa from India. That's pretty much it. Do you like potatoes? Uh-uh. We're going to have to talk about this after the podcast. And then we have the underappreciated but fun Ishrak. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Ishrak and um, I'm from Dhaka, Bangladesh. And I live in the mysterious little house close to Spain. Awesome. Next up, we have the affable Zara. Hi everyone, I'm Zara, a human from Pakistan taking biotech degree in Swimburn and someone who loves to eat ice cream even if it's winter. Right. And last but not least, we have the delightful Hatham, or as I like to call him, Baby Lama. Hi guys, I'm Hatham. I'm a student at Swinburne. I am on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Hatham. <clears throat> Let's kickstart the podcast with describing what a typical Eid morning looks like for all of you. And I'm expecting some similarities, so it's okay not to seem completely unique. You are all already special as it is. Can we start with Shukrina? <laughs> okay, for Eid, we don't start at the morning of the Eid. We start way back at the last night of the Eid. Not last night. We start the eat from the night before because we will start cooking and everything. So everyone gonna gather together and cook. It's mm-hmm. gonna be really loud and everyone is you know just happy. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. We cook all this kind of food and stuff. And then the next morning we're gonna wake up super early mm-hmm. because we're gonna have to reheat all the food and we're gonna eat a bit <laughs> and go to. Then we come back and we continue eat again. This this is the time. When you really eat all you want, you really stuff your mouth, everything that you see in front of you. So yeah. Okay. That is my morning eat. <laughs> and what about you, Shafaf? Well, for me, back home, the eat starts the day before eat, actually. Mm-hmm. After, right after the fast. Last day of the fast, but after we break the fast. Mm-hmm. So it's almost when, back, it's always like when I'm back home, all of us, as in me, my dad, my cousins, brothers, everyone goes for shopping together. Aww. And we make sure that we go together the last day. So it's it's going to be hectic, going to be busy, it's going to be messy. But that's the fun about it. Like you, We go all together, find whatever we could. It's not about finding the most stylish outfit or anything. It's something new and as long as it fits, it fits. That's it. Shops are always busy at that time. Mm-hmm. Like everyone shopping and most of the time the shops are open till like late nights, like one, two, three. We get something, get some, get an outfit and then we come back and then we watch 
our mom or our sister everyone will be like making sweets and then you know so there is something called the henna henna yeah they put, yeah so they will be putting her henna for each other and there will be music playing it's one of a kind it's fun so somehow we end up sleeping i don't know how so we <laughs> fall asleep somehow we fall asleep and it's usually my dad waking me up be like yo we got to go for the prayer because that's one important ritual in the eat mm. so we somehow get ready get dressed up put our new outfits on and everything usually it's we are just rushing for the prayer and then we run to get get to the prayer without eating anything no breakfast nothing just go for the prayer mm. finish the prayer and then at the prayer place you meet a lot of people friends families cousins you know like everyone comes to the prayer right so meet everyone greet each other and there is a hug it's so special on eid like everyone has to hug each other Aww. so after the prayer we hug out hug it out and all that exchange to greetings and nice and especially when you're kids nowadays i don't really get it but this is where you expect money from other people for me now it's very hard like i can't just expect someone four or five years back or maybe at least two three years back i would expect like okay fine this person would possibly give me money and then i would give a special greeting to these people They're like oh, i know i'll be getting some money ah. So you're extra nice yeah. to these people because you know you're gonna get money from them. Definitely. <laughs> so because I got it last time, get it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very so, smart. It, it works when you're kids. You know, you just you don't know. <laughs> And then <laughs> trying to get try to get money out of people that mm-hmm. happens. But it's not like huge amount of money. Come on, like when you're kids, even one buck is like yeah. So that. It's the little things that made happy, and then we go back home. Usually, usually we try not to take our car or anything. We just try to walk to the nearby place, pray, come back. Mm. And when we come back, this is the best part. <laughs> when we come back, so remember I told you all the babies or my mom, grandma, everyone was buying sweets last night. Yeah. This girl, they take out all the. Sweets. Me being the eldest, I get the, and then she'll give me a huge plate of sweets, Ooh. and and she'll be like, ah, oh, distribute it to anyone, everyone. But you know me, I won't do that. <laughs> I would taste first, <laughs> and it's so good. It's the best of the best moments in it. Do a, I don't know. It's after fasting for thirty days, and you really, really, really enjoy that sweet, just because. It's made at in home. It's not something you just buy and you know like distribute it. My mom makes it. One of the best. I think potato would know. It's called the neyapo. 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 Is it like? Is it the same as ney orinda? Yeah. It's yeah. Like it's like it's like the rice pancake. Yeah. Rice pancake. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's very small. Or small. It practically melts in your mouth, right? It's made from ghee. Yeah, exactly. So imagine you don't eat anything throughout the day. Go for prayer. Mm. Come back. And you're happy with the loads of cash in your pocket, and then you take the first bite. The first bite is a sweet rice cake. Oh my gosh! And, oh my god! I, I, I'm just—it's just mouth watering now. I want to go back home. Oh. But this is just the beginning. So, and then I get to distribute the sweets throughout everyone. Like everyone gets the sweets. My friend, my, it's mostly like all the kids, and you know, mm-hmm. everyone. And then. probably my grandma would make a refreshing juice or something in the morning for everyone mm-hmm. so and then we'll go on to the breakfast breakfast is pretty typical like that will be something to eat mm-hmm. and then after that after around 30 40 minutes that's when visiting starts your close relatives start to visit and it's not like they come and they sit and start talking they just come visit hey hi exist how are you happy <laughs> hug hug it out you know that please get it mm-hmm. <laughs> In the meantime, if you are a kid, you also get paid. You get a couple of bucks. So that happens throughout the day, till mo- in the morning session, yeah. Mm-hmm. So ah, uh, right after that, around around when it's lunch time, that's when the good stuff comes out. Biryani. So when she, my when my mom opens the lid for biryani, when it's prepared, the house is full of that beautiful aroma around the whole house. Whole house, and you know what's coming. It's so it's good. Like even the aroma will actually destroy half of your hunger. Cause for most probably it's all and the entire family sitting down together in one table and then eating fun family. It's mostly biryani with some couple of side dishes. Right. So we finish our biryani and we are full to the brim. Like we are 
we will eat until we could vomit. We will eat so much that we will be so full, we can't even move. And then we sit in our sofas, looking upstairs, what to do, what to do next. That's when mom comes with the dessert. So dessert is always surprising. You never know. I don't know. It, every year it changes up. It's according to my mom's mood. Oh. So, dessert, after that dessert, that's it. Your brain shuts off. I go back to sleep. I <laughs> cannot function anymore because the whole night I, I barely got two hours of sleep, everyone. And we are full on biryani and dessert. Like It's a food coma. A, it's a food coma <laughs> yeah. uh, with a sleep deprivation and <laughs> multiple things in together. So your brain just goes, oh. Stop, done. And then I pass out. And I really don't know what happens after that. That's that's pretty much my end of a sleep. And what about you, Ishraq? Can you relate to anything that Shafaf has said? I mean, if you had asked me first, I would have said the exact same thing. It's uh. actually. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I could totally relate to it. So I just want to add again, like for, for me, like back in home, uh, actually the excitement, you know, it starts like, let's say, a week ahead. To eat, you know, mm-hmm. it's still the same. Everything is still the same. We are still, you know, fasting and uh, uh, eating iftar. But like the buzz starts, you know, the like buzz. the little things start changing. Like uh, maybe at, well, while eating iftar, we will discuss like, oh, like maybe this time we should make this, or maybe this time, you know, those cousins are not going back to their, you know different hometowns, so they'll be here. So, you know, those, those, those little things start and you already start feeling that, you know, it's coming. You know, nothing like uh, changes in a big way, but as it gets closer and closer, the excitement just builds up. Mm-hmm. And Shafa was like, at the, in the night before the eat, I think that's when, you know, it reaches like a peak. You know, for me, for me, that is like the, you know, best feeling. You know, before it happens, because that's where the fun is. You know, you're preparing for it. Like I help, like mm. my mom with perhaps um, cleaning up the room or the whole house because she's already so busy with, you know, the cooking and all of that. Mm-hmm. So I try to do a little bit of that. And um, one thing that stands out for me uh, during every eat is like, yeah, you know, when I uh, when we come back from the prayer in the eat morning. Uh, usually, we uh, we touch the feet of our elders. Okay. And yeah, and then they give us like a money, mm-hmm. you know, and we call that uh, salami actually okay. in Bangladesh, uh, the money that you get from your elders. Right. So what stands out for me is like my uh, my mom, that she she would always uh, from from when we were very young, my brother and I, um, she she never gave us money, you know. Mm-hmm. She always would. Uh, you know, she would be very observant about what we are into, you know, at that age or what we want. And she would actually buy, you know, exactly that thing for us and give it to us on the, you know, eat morning. And, you know, that would always, yeah, that would always, you know, really like fascinate me because everyone, you know, even my dad, she would, he would give us like money. But, you know, she would go to the, you know, extent of, you know, putting that much thought into it and that would be alarming so that also is a memory I associate with Eid but other than that yeah your question was how the Eid morning is it's exactly like how Shafa described yeah it's very similar one yeah. well, thanks Ishak that's a that's a beautiful story hmm, Eid in Pakistan just yeah. for me this is my own personal opinion okay. I'm telling you my own Eid story so I'm not sure if, if all Pakistanis can relate to it or not but mm-hmm. Eid for me starts um, the day before the Eid, so the night before the Eid, mm-hmm. when um, everyone rushes to the top after um, opening their fast, after breaking their fast, they go to the rooftop to see the moon, mm-hmm. even though they can't see it. I don't oh. think it's, it's, remember even one single time when I was able to see the moon. Of, right. But we try our best to like create memories on the rooftop to, <laughs> just to be there and have fun. And after that, once it's announced that the Eid is on the next day, mm-hmm. everyone will rush to the shopping malls, to bazaars, to complete their Eid shopping and to buy the last thing that they want. For example, for me, it will be usually my small, tiny bit jewelry. Mm-hmm. And then uh, on the way back, we'll buy mehndi and then we'll just put mehndi on each other's hands. We'll draw it. And I remember one time my sister was drawing it. I fall asleep. And the next day when I woke 
club, I had this like stamp of manly on my face, <laughs> on my bed, as well as on my pillow. That was messy. Was your mom upset? No, she was laughing <laughs> so badly. Cause, it, Cause I literally stamped it on my face. So I had like this tattoo of manly on my face. Even though I tried to wash it and I could wash the most of it, but still it was still there, like a little bit of it as a memory from from the night before Aww. and then yeah, we start off our day with something sweet and then we pray we offer our eat prayers and then we have Edie, the best part all oh, right and then we just eat together and spend time with the family that's pretty much it ed is the part where you get money right yeah totally okay. it's the best thing ever. right tatham still hasn't told us about his eat morning oh you see the funny thing is just like shafa the Eve is very similar. Ah. In the morning. You just have the same exact Eve that I do. Yeah, it's the same Eve. <laughs> <laughs> all around the world. It's not the same at all. Like, it really sounds so different with mine. But we don't hug each other. Um, I would offer to yeah. come and hug you, Shukrina. Die, die, at least you're well hydrated. Uh, I don't think they do this in Semenanjo, like, not really, not people do this. Mm -hmm. But in Sarawak, yes, we do one whole month. Okay. So, yeah. I don't know about the others. Only three days. Yeah. Yeah. Three, three days. days. Three months. Three months. Five. One, so, you celebrate for one month. <laughs> in in West Malaysia, it's actually similar to what Shuk said, but it's not exactly one month. It's about one to two weeks. We go visiting everyone's houses because everyone cannot have the open house on the same three days. It's not enough, and the whole of Malaysia wants to have the open house, so they they plan it out like that so that we can visit everyone's houses. Yeah, you're going to meet the people and visit their house. What if you have so many people? many houses. Maybe that one person have a house and another person have another house. <laughs> they have to go to everyone's house. So, yeah. All of you guys say, okay, so this Eid, everyone will meet up here. Next Eid, maybe we'll meet up somewhere else. Okay, like, come on, just like to show off their house. Okay, come on. I think, I think it just provides like an opportunity to meet the same people over and over again. So basically what happens is like on the day of Eid itself, for example, all my cousins and all my aunts and uncles, they would come over to, let's say, our place. Mm. And then the next day, we would go to another aunt's place. And the following day, another aunt's place. So it's basically yeah, it's the same thing. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, but we are, you know, just meeting again and again, you know, wearing our best <laughs> clothes and whatnot. <laughs> You know, so I think that's basically you know, which is fun. Yeah. It's all about showing off, okay? Yes, it's meeting each other. Okay, that's different than, than what we celebrate or how we celebrate because for us, all the younger siblings will go to the house of the eldest one and will just stay there for, for a week. For a week? Because, yeah, because my house is to my grandpa house. All the siblings of my mom's and my father will come to the grandpa house. So we all will just gonna go there. <laughs> In a way, even though it's different, everyone still agrees that they do visit several houses during Eid. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then, um, Baby Lama, it's for those of us who know you, we know your background. But you didn't share your background with the rest of the audience yet. What do you mean by my background? Why yeah. people where, look at you and get confused. Where do you come from? Oh my country. <laughs> and what are you? Are you asking for my social security number? That's how identity theft happens, okay? You don't come from somewhere white. I come from the villages of Africa. So where are you from, Hatem? Uh, I'm from Kenya. Kenya. And then you are Caucasian? <laughs> yes, I am also Arab. You're part Caucasian, part Arab. And then you may or may not have some Indonesian blood somewhere in the mix. Uh, yeah, that I think is on my mother's side. Right. And you could be Indian for all we know. Uh -huh. At this point, it's just safe to assume that I'm part of everything. So <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're everything. I am the ultimate diversity hire. So you are a Yemeni British born and raised in Kenya. Yes. There you go. So that's why it was confusing to some of us, especially those of us who knew you, when you said that your Eid was very similar to what Shafaf and Ishak had said earlier. One thing that was in common with all of your stories was that typical Eid celebrations all over the world start with that prayers, which is like, it's a short sermon that occurs in halls or the mosques, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yes. Because of the pandemic and the MCO, you can't have this mass gathering, this prayers that you always start your Eid morning with. So I know when I put it like that, it just sounds like, hey, everyone can just pray at home. But for years, 
a lot of you, it has been a part and parcel of the tradition for so many people to wake up each morning and go and have this mass gathering where you pray and you will not having that usual eat prayer routine as a start of your eat morning affect a large part of your 2020 Raya experience. Okay, so I, I would say it, it would because I, I do not remember an eat where I did not start the day with prayers, you know. Yeah. But having said that, anyways, Eid when I met, whenever I celebrate it over here in Malaysia tend to be different. Mm-hmm. Uh, even when I started with um, you know the prayer at the mosque, so in that sense, it's not going to be that different, I, I think. But definitely, the start of the day is going to be different. In in the morning itself, you really understand that. Oh, okay, today is Eid because it's. Uh, you do wake up early mm-hmm. whether or not you are a morning person mm-hmm. and you just are excited about the day mm-hmm. ahead. But, you know, when you don't have that, you know, this year, I don't think, like, I won't force myself to wake up early. So, you know, obviously, it's going to, <laughs> it's going to be different for sure. Mm-hmm. Your Eid, again, you, you repeated that part where you said that your Eid back at home and back in Malaysia is still slightly different? Yeah. What was that about? Well, it's different because, um, first of all, the, the, the major difference is that there's no family here, right? Yeah. Um, so, what are you uh, trying to the, say? So, <laughs> no, like, you know, like a mom, dad, oh, you know, that okay. kind of family. <laughs> so, so, I don't, when I have the family over there, so the whole plan, the, most of the plans actually revolve around what they want to do. And, and of course, I meet my friends as well, but that forms like a part of the day. Mm. Whereas whenever I'm here, it's up to us what we want to make of our day. Okay, so right. we do not, we can choose to, you know, stick to a regime or a routine that we follow back home, mm-hmm. or we can create our new routines or new uh, you know, routines, and which ends up happening because here I only don't have like friends from Bangladesh, right? Yeah. Like I have other friends as well. So we talk and we decide what can we do. So we, we don't necessarily, you know, just visit places or something like that. We can, you know, even end up doing something we don't do back home. For instance, I remember. Uh, one Eid where we just obviously started off in the mosque and then we came back home and then we just uh, played cards till, you know, the afternoon Mm -hmm. and then went out for lunch, you know, which is something we would never do back uh, in Bangladesh. I would not go to a restaurant for Mm -hmm. lunch. Does that mean it was worse? No. I mean, it was a new kind of Eid, but it was nice nonetheless because I still got to spend it with people that I love. So yeah, it's different, but it's still good. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's different different than back home, of course. Because over here, you mostly have your friends and you don't really have your family and your relatives. So um, sometimes you really can't cook at home because you're just so tired with your studies and all that. Mm-hmm. So you usually go out to eat at different places, restaurants, or just hang out with your friends. So yeah, it's, it's different. Totally, but still something good. You're mm-hmm. still spending time with the people you love, as just mentioned by Shra. Right. Uh, I was just saying it's a bit different. Not worse, just different. Well, it just started off with morning prayers, naturally. Mm-hmm. Then I spent the rest of the day just doing what I wanted. Mm-hmm. Hanging out with friends, going out to eat. Okay. It was pleasant. It's pretty much the same for everyone. Shukrina, yours is with your family though, right? Yeah, yeah. Yours is with I think the last time during Eid, a few of us had gone to Shukrina's house, right? Yeah. 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 I was yeah. Your grandma's house? Yeah, it's my grandma's house. Oh. So, yeah. And then I accidentally ate beef. No! I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It was interesting. It's the same as what Ishan said. It's usually with the friends. Mm-hmm. We get to do whatever we want to. Sometimes we decide to cook. Sometimes we go out for a trip. It oh. depends. It's not the typical... Mm-hmm. Eat back home with family, as Ishak said. Right. Damn. Mm. I'm so sad I can't come to your house this time around. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Next year. What are you going to cook for us then? What yeah. Um. Obviously, I'm going to cook you all some mashed potatoes. You always act the easy way. How about the brownies? <laughs> oh, I don't have an oven here. Uh, I But I messed up the last batch. They're like only 70% cooked. I have to eat them with a spoon. <laughs> Still, I love the chocolate cake. 
Yeah, knowing Hatum, you're not even dreading the fact that you had to eat it raw. Hey, I'm the person who licks the bowl clean, so that's no problem. <laughs> Followed by the mass prayers that everyone has, you start to exchange well wishes with the people in the mosque itself. And I guess with our current condition, thank potatoes for technology, we will start wishing each other virtually instead of in the mosque because of the pandemic, we all can't meet up anymore. So the electronic green raya cards with the little firecrackers will start being circulated, especially in those family group chats. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't think we know about it because we haven't gone through such things ever, ever in our life. This is new. <laughs> This whole thing is new. Oh, the MCO, right. We have a actual right. global pandemic situation. And you want to enjoy it. You know, I experienced this situation before. Mm-hmm. Because some of, my, uh, some of my families were in Brunei. And I don't know why. They like to celebrate one day ahead of us <laughs> or one day after us. For some reason. But how this time zone is exactly the same. The same. Yeah. They follow the, the Saudi one. I don't know. But yeah, la, they want to follow that. So, for all that. So, they always, for them, they always come to my place, my hometown, uh, one day before their, their Eid, mm-hmm. and then the next day they will celebrate their own Raya at their place. Like, they, they celebrate. The yeah. 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 Like, uh, something. yeah, no, uh, something similar for Bangladesh as well. Like, bang, uh, the Eid in Bangladesh is always the day after it is celebrated in Malaysia. So, um, what my family does is, they wish me on the Eid day in Malaysia, of course, mm-hmm. and then the following day again they will wish oh. me. So I basically uh, celebrate, you know, the both Ooh. the days somehow. Yeah. But you know, it doesn't make that much of a difference to me, anyways, because back in Bangladesh, you know, like officially we celebrate Eid for three days, you know. So mm-hmm. it just feels like more of the same to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm, I can relate to the same thing mm-hmm. because usually um, we don't really have Eid on the same day in Pakistan as well as Malaysia. Yeah. So they will wish me when it's Eid there and I'll wish them when it's Eid here. So it's still the same thing. Early morning wishes on both days. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, everyone wishes you whenever it's Eid, wherever they are. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just have like three... Two, uh, about two days where everyone is just wishing Eid every morning. <laughs> <laughs> what a good day to start. And do you guys celebrate Eid on all those days as well? Yes. Well, it's only... Oh, no, I mean, when I'm in Malaysia, um, like, pretty much the Eid day itself is, like, you know, hyped and whatever. Like Because also here, we just get that day off, right? Yeah. Uh, usually, maybe we we'll, we would have class the next day or submissions or whatever, you know. So it's not really like that. But when I'm back at home, definitely like a few days, we will celebrate it like that. But um, here, maybe it's just that day. And then the next day, we just move on. Um, so, yeah. Okay, this exchanging of wishes thing will usually on a normal Eid progress until like when the when everyone starts visiting your houses, right? You go to the houses, you start wishing everyone there as well. And then this is where all the food, all the potatoes, all the socializing, all the blessings and the monies come from the elder girl. This would probably be the most popular part for most celebrations, the food. Once again, I'm sure that there will be some similarities here and there, but... Let's give the audience a little bit of a nostalgic trip and talk about the smell, the aroma, the taste, everything that you can about the different foods from where you guys come from. (laughs) So in the morning, as I mentioned before, we usually have this sweet dish. Mm. So it's either one of these three, um, Kheer, Shrikwarma or Soinya. What is Shrikwarma? It's just Bihon, sweet Bihon and Ah. uh, Kheer more milky. There's a uh, more milk in it, uh-huh. and there's usually rice. Ooh, rice and milk. Mm-hmm. So after the kebab, mm-hmm. um, sometimes chicken curry as well, Ooh. and naan, different mm-hmm. kind of naan. Yeah, anything Pakistani that you can think of. Um, Full of healthy, but delicious. <laughs> the what? What is the difference between a chicken karahi and a chicken curry? So a chicken curry is more like um, especially the container, the the, the thing that you're gonna use to cook it in. Is different a lot of different spices and for chicken curry it's more simple so there are less spices used in the making but for chicken curry there are more spices other than all the five spices powder which is known as garam masala garam masala okay yes oh yeah and yeah, it comes to food you start off with sweet 
It's always something sweet, as Zara said. Mm-hmm. It's usually something really, really sweet. But I think it's the same thing, uh, the same kind of dish. But mm-hmm. I think uh, just certain regional varieties. I think what Zara mentioned. I think we do have the same sweet dishes, but what we call it, we call it shamai, which is basically vermicelli. It's mainly cooked. It can be a, a dry one, which is basically you fry it in ghee, okay. or yeah. also cooked. Uh, sometimes it's cooked in milk, and we also have something called uh, paish, which is. basically like a uh, rice pudding so you have uh, but not really and um, basically rice in 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 like very sweet milk all houses across bangladesh you will find you know these two dishes at least you know right so uh, that is uh, that's definitely definitely going to be there but i must add like it's it's not like that anymore like uh, it used to be i think even when i was younger people used to stick to just just these dishes but now it's more i feel like modern like uh, like for example my mom she would cook this dishes but then she would also want to try something new that she watched on mm. youtube that has nothing to perhaps do with you know the tradition like, or you know, like all yeah. of a sudden she'll have like a christmas turkey on the table uh, maybe i don't know like uh, so something new something you know uh, different i've seen a lot of people will do that as well in bangladesh you know mm. uh, and i like it. right uh, the sweet dish that you talked about that comes with a uh, vermicelli have you heard of yeah. this indian dish called payasam yes yes <laughs> yes very salty yes. so it's the, it, is it similar it, it's, it's, the, it's similar to what zara said kheer it's similar oh. somewhere around that okay okay i'm yeah. seeing, i'm starting to see a little bit of a stimulation here okay baby lama okay, i feel like i'm the worst person to ask about food a lot of the time i don't know what it's called my mom just puts it in front of me and you put it, it in like <laughs> can you describe it at least well it's never one specific food it's anything that sweet pastries or anything like that really? it's never really anything specific You've talked about jalebi before. Is that one of them? Wow. Mm. The orange thing that you made me eat when I came to make brownie. No, no, no. That's more of a dessert rather than a breakfast. Ah. Well, so long as it's a bit sweet, that should be fine. Like dates. Yeah, but I've never really liked dates. Uh. I always skip it. Yeah, even though my mom always insists. Um, okay. But since you mentioned jalebi, so what? It's the same thing. Uh, the orange sweet that you're talking about, but we call it jalebi in Bengali. Jilapi. And I want to mention that it's actually like a very, very important part of our iftars, which is basically the meal that we have to break our fast mm. in Bangladesh. It is like uh, a, almost like a staple for iftar. uh you know very thick and juicy and then there the ones that are very thin and uh, oh. crispy but okay, so throughout okay. the month of ramadan people would you know uh, eat so much jalebi but on the day of eid we don't eat jalebi so i don't know. <laughs> i don't know yeah. does anybody know how to describe jalebi cuz i'm actually not that big of a fan of jalebi shafaf can you describe it very nicely please <laughs> What more can I say? It is orange and it's dipped in sweet syrup, sugar syrup. So it is sweet. It's made yeah. of flour, is it? I think so. Uh, How did the flour I become so. orange? It is made out of flour, eggs, and milk, I guess, and then cooked oil. Oh. Cooked oil, and then as soon as they take it out, they dip it in uh, sugar syrup. So it has a sweet taste. Have you guys seen people make like jalebi? Yes. Yes. Oh. yes. Yeah. The typical thing in marriages, you see, oh fresh jalebi is may being made right then and there. They so they just take it in front of you and dip it in the sugar syrup, and you get to dip it. Really. Yeah. In, in Pakistan, jalebi in marriages, no, it's just too sweet. We don't really have it in our iftars as well. We just um, usually have it for gatherings. Yeah, no, I think it's a very Bengali thing. <laughs> it's all over Bangladesh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shukrina, what kind of sweet yeah. dishes do we start with? I can't recall. Because uh, it's basically kue, uh, kue lapis, oh. that kind of stuff. Oh yes, kue lapis. The cake sarawa is basically the ones. Yeah. Those kind of cakes, those kind of stuff. But mainly kue lapis, like those cake, those mm-hmm. really dense, oily cake. Yeah. But, but it's really good. The, the thing is that. 
usually that one we start we eat that as a dessert we don't eat it before we start our rendang and rice and everything right no we just eat everything <laughs> just chop everything in the morning <laughs> not about mainly in the morning we don't really eat sweet we mainly eat the the heavy food like mm. the ketupat the nasi empit the kuah kacang the sate everything like Like the the actual food, we don't start with dessert or anything small. We just start with straight away go to the good food. Right. We have to explain what ketupat is. Oh, yeah, ketupat is basically a mash rice inside the what leaf is that? No lah. No, it's the yeah the, the coconut the long thin ones. Then we have lemang. Lemang is uh inside the what do you call that thing? Bamboo is it bamboo? <laughs> That's the thing. I have no idea. Lemang is basically. <laughs> well, Uh, lemang is the the rice thing, the sticky. Ah, oh, it's it's like sticky rice, but oh. the actual rice, not like the tteokbokki one. Yeah. Okay, Hitam, do you also have biryani? At lunchtime, never heard of anyone eating it for breakfast. Ah, uh, it it just ah, uh, you know, Malaysia <laughs> extra. So now that we've basically gone through the food, but are there others like other beliefs and customs regarding things that are not allowed to be done during Eid? Channel those PTSD memories of your grandparents yelling at you not to clean the house on Eid and telling you to clean it earlier or not cutting your fingernails or I don't know, don't accidentally oh, kill a fly. Oh, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I have yeah. a lot of. Yeah, there's a lot. Like, oh, they always do. They always say it in the club. I personally have never experienced any such yeah. thing though. Yeah, same, same. Like uh, we're allowed to do everything and anything. We must clean our house. You have to clean your house. You have to decorate your house. Like it's part of it for us. Even if you have no one coming over, you still yeah, you just have to clean it. You have to clean it. I don't know why. You just us. You have to do those kind of stuff. You you need to be extra on Hari Raya. I mean, it's a special celebration. That's why we go all out. We usually start with three or four outfit. Yeah. That's already too much for me, I guess. But this is also because you guys celebrate for like whole month. But for yeah. us. Only maximum. Yeah, I think so. That's why. Right. Oh, speaking of outfits, I really like it during Eid when we go to malls and you see the whole family—the mother, the father, the sister, the brother, the grandma, even the babies wearing the same outfits. It's the cutest yeah, same thing. Color, right? <laughs> They're all like, like it's so cute. Do you guys do that too? Yeah, we do that. Like the whole family with the cousins and everyone. When we when we were kids, lah. But mm. now I don't think they want anymore. Um. <laughs> In Bangladesh, this has definitely never been a thing. Really? <laughs> Why? Like you guys can either really fine. Well, uh, no, no. I mean, we each want to buy. I mean, we wear our traditional clothes. Tell that whose family is this and everything, you know? <laughs> that is part of it, actually. You'll never get lost. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's everyone just wears whatever is nice mm-hmm. and then goes about their day. Yeah. Mm. We just wear something new, nice, that fits okay. That's pretty much it. But matching, not really. Okay. Yeah, it's a religious thing, I guess. Yeah. I think <laughs> sometimes maybe my sister, my mom, or someone would buy something matching, but that's very rare. Mm. But it's not a thing, though. Wow. <laughs> you know, I feel so left out now. You know, but it's okay. That's how you know different ways of celebrating. That. It's Sorry. really different. I didn't know it was gonna be this different, you know, because my uncles will wear the same thing, mm-hmm. same fabric. Mm. I don't know if it's with you guys or not, and they will also make it for let's say my grandparents, mm-hmm. but only males. The females choose their own outfits the way they want. Oh, so you can't use the same material as the males? It's not that we can't. We don't want to oh. because they're gonna make. They're gonna use um that fabric to make uh, um shawar kameez, and it has a specific material. Mm. And for girls, it's more like blinky, blinky, and colorful. Mm. Or shiny with the stones yeah. and everything. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. for let's say my grandparents, but it's not a common. Oh, what else? What about say? how potatoes are an overrated vegetable? <laughs> This is not. Uh, <laughs> you said you were joking. I could have been joking about joking. <laughs> no. <Lord. laughs> All right. Fascinating, isn't it? How one celebration can be so diverse and personalized in different geographical boundaries. I may use this word a lot, but rest assured, it doesn't dilute its meaning. It truly is 
Beautiful. So thank you everyone for joining me after your iftar today and sharing your memories. I'm definitely adding biryani for Eve into my bucket list. And then after that, I can die once I fulfill it. You guys can bring bouquets of potatoes to my funeral. Thank you. <laughs> Does anyone want to say anything to the listeners who are celebrating Eve away from their families? We're all in this together. Oh. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think this year it would be more of prayers and less of celebration. Mm. Yeah. And it's all about hope and what we are going through right now. Right. So I think everyone can stay safe, be happy, call each other to wish, enjoy this Eid. A different kind of Eid. Yeah. yeah. So with that, you guys, since you guys are going to be celebrating and with prayers and all that, but just a reminder get the people who are near you and your friends and also those who are literally staying alone. Just maybe text them or okay. wish them. Well, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Eat a lot. That hasn't already been said. I want to say, I want to say. So, Selamat Hari Raya to everyone. Maaf Zahir and Batin if I do any mistake to you, but for those international, do you say? Eat uh, a lot everyone. Uh, forgive me if I do anything wrong to you guys. Enjoy yourself, even though now we're not celebrating like how we always do, but we're still going to celebrate it on our own because why not? Okay, it doesn't make any sense. Thank you very much. <laughs> you heard it loud and clear. Let's make the fullest of what we have and hope that things get better. Until then, we have each other. So don't forget to call and wish your loved ones, family and friends included. Speaking of wishing your loved ones... Well, <laughs> oh, that was beautiful, guys. I heard the thing from Abram. Good job. Salamat Hari Raya. This is your host, Potato, signing off. Stay beautiful and don't fall down. And cut.